When you're interested in tackling large societal issues, then perhaps spatial engineering is something for you. My name is Thomas Groen. I'm the program director of spatial engineering. And in this short video, I will try to explain to you what spatial engineering is all about. The world is facing a lot of challenges these days. Climatic change, the corona pandemic, biodiversity loss, the energy transition, a lot of things to mention. Now these are very complex problems with many different facets. And there's often not a single solution to solve these problems. And lastly, but not least, these problems often have a large spatial component. Now how to handle or tame these big problems, that is actually at the core of spatial engineering. In spatial engineering, we try to teach students through three different projects how to tackle wicked problems. In the first project, you will actually look at a relatively small scale problem in a city that suffers from flooding. These are existing problems in, for example, the city of Enschede or the city of Kampala. And you have to see how you can make the problem less complex by addressing this with spatial information. In the second problem, or the second case study, we make it a little bit larger. We look at uh, food security and water security. Often here, there are conflicts in interest. Sometimes people are interested in agriculture and that conflicts with, for example, the interest of nature conservation. So there are opposing viewpoints on how to solve the situation. In the third case study project, we look at human-induced earthquakes and how that feeds into the energy transition. Here, the complexity is even larger because often governments and societies further away that benefit, for example, from gas extraction are conflicting with uh, communities that are closer by to the mining and that actually suffer the negative consequences of these actions. As you can see, we offer students a number of projects that build up in complexity. Now, of course, as I said it already many times, these uh, problems are centered around a certain framework. This is the framework of wicked problems. Now, wickedness can be expressed along two axes. One axis is an axis of knowledge. Do we have a lot of knowledge about a problem or limited knowledge? The other axis is an axis on agreement. Is there a lot of agreement or is there disagreement? Now, the most wicked situation is when there is disagreement and at the same time limited knowledge. As an example, I could mention earthquakes in the center of the United States. These earthquakes are partially a result of mining activities, but also can be a result of natural causes. So, who is responsible and how to solve this? There will be different viewpoints depending on where you stand. So it's a very wicked problem because also we do not know exactly what causes these earthquakes. There is limited knowledge and disagreement. A more tame situation, but still not completely tame, is when there is actually agreement, but we lack knowledge. For example, when we have to address the impacts of a disaster. Everybody would agree that we have to help people that are in a disaster zone, but we still don't have all the knowledge to actually stop disasters from happening. Another condition could be that there is actually disagreement, but we have a lot of knowledge. As an example, you could mention houses that are built on riverbanks. People are free to put their houses where they want, so they could choose to live near a river. But if the river rises, they can actually get flooded. We're pretty good at modeling the flooding of rivers, but the free choice of people is perhaps a debate. You could agree or disagree with that. So sometimes lack of agreement is the core problem of an issue. The most tame situation is when we have end agreement and a lot of knowledge. In these cases, actually, we only have to find the technical solution to implement it. Now, of course, you do not have to tame these wicked problems all by yourself. So the three case study projects that you will follow are actually being done in group work. So you will work with a diverse group of people with different backgrounds. And you have to come to a consensus as a group on how are you going to tame the wicked problem that's being offered to you. Again, it's not just you students doing it together. You will get help and support from the staff of the faculty ITC. We give you choice topics. These choice topics are very specialized topics that help you to tame the wicked problem. For example, you will learn spatial multi-criteria analysis or flood modeling. This helps you to come with a technical intervention that can make the problem less wicked. Of course, you have to do that together with the group, so you also need to learn teamworking skills. So we support you in what kind of tools there are to come as a group to a workable plan to actually work out your solution. At the same time, uh, you will work in an international environment. So you will work with people from different cultural backgrounds. And sometimes this means people have different values or different opinions. 
you have to learn to work with that in a respectable manner. And so you will also learn about internationalization. And lastly, of course, you will have to report on what you've done. So you also have to work on what we call academic skills. You have to write a logical structured report with good argumentation and with good reference to existing literature to actually defend the choices that you made in the project. So after these three case study projects, in the fourth quartile of the first year, you will have a chance to choose electives. There are many electives on offer at our faculty, ranging from spatial multi-criteria analysis, but much more in depth, to advanced remote sensing or flood modeling, etc. If you want to look what kind of electives are available, you can look in our online study guide to actually make your own temporary study guide based on these electives and find out what is on offer. Now, after the first year, you will enter the second year, starting with an international module. The goal of the international module is to make you aware of potential organizations where you can work after you've studied spatial engineering. So we will do a tour along organizations in Europe, and sometimes also virtually outside Europe, with organizations that are potential employers. For example, the Asian Development Bank or uh, ESRI uh, software developers. This gives you a flavor of what you can expect after you are finished with your study of spatial engineering. Now, after the international module, you will do your research topic. The research project is something that you do together with two supervisors from the faculty and can cover a wide range of topics. For example, disaster risk reduction, but also sustainable food production, biodiversity conservation, urban planning, transport planning, etc. But always at a certain spatial scale and always with a wicked component in it. In the last part of the second year, you will do a compulsory internship. This is very important to us because it helps you to connect to the work field. We have very good connections with uh, several organizations and quite frequently we have students that did an internship somewhere and then actually managed to get a job there. We have, for example, a student who studied uh, sustainable transport systems in the Netherlands and she managed to get a job there after she graduated. After you are graduated, um, of course, you have to find a job. And we also have a professional advisory board that helps us to make sure that the content that we offer you is relevant for potential employers. And these employers are very wide ranging, but always uh, organizations that tackle wicked problems. For example, consultancy firms that operate internationally, uh, national governments or uh, non-governmental organizations like the Red Cross. If you decide to move to Enschede to study spatial engineering, know that you will not be alone. The faculty of ITC has been hosting people from around the world for many years and when you come here you will notice that there's many people around you from other places. So it's much likely that you will meet people from your own country, but you will also build a network with people from other countries. And actually this is a very interesting network that you will carry around for the rest of your life and that can help you. I hope this short video showed you what spatial engineering is about and that it inspired you to explore options further. And hopefully we can welcome you in the future.